Uh, kia ora, greetings. Welcome to Mana Talanoa in this series of Legends of Rugby League. I'm Andre Whitaker, and it's a pleasure in this session for me to be talking to three former players from the Upper Hutt City Tigers. Uh, they also played representative football. One of them made the Kiwis, and they also had the distinction of going to play professional rugby league over in the UK in the same club at Witness. So it's a pleasure for me to welcome to Mana Talanoa uh, for this session. Esene Faimalo, Joe Faimalo, and Ben Lear. Talofa lava, guys. Lovely to have you on. Talofa. 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 Talofa, Andre. No, lovely, lovely. Look, um, one thing that's common with all three of you, apart from having played for Witness, was um, obviously of Samoan heritage. It'd be really nice just to you know, chat about your links back home to Samoa and the village and the family. And maybe starting off with you, Ben, going back to your family links home to Samoa and um, uh, other parts of the Pacific, as the case may be. Cool. Thanks, Andre. So uh, my mum, Satina Okia Moore, is my mum's uh, maiden name. So mum comes from a small village called Siomo in Safata. So that's pretty much like the Wap Wops back in Ubolo, the main island. And dad comes from um, a village called Malia, which is not far from town. So Malia meaning shark. So dad's from Malia and mum's from Siom. Fantastic. Um, and have you spent time traveling back to Samoa yourself too, Ben, over the years? Yeah, we were quite, like, quite fortunate as kids. We'd uh, been back to Samoa and back quite a few times. Um, even like, I think the last time I went there, I surprised mum for uh, Mother's Day. I thought that might be a nice Mother's Day present. And then um, find out that dad's got some tukalauan in him. And uh, yeah. on mum's side, it's Fiji and in Tongan. Well, it's, when it comes Pacific Cup time, then there's a, there's a few juicies that you might be able to, um, to put on, that, on the field. <laughs> that, that's, that's very interesting to know, Ben. And over to Esene and Joe, between you and yep. obviously your brothers and um, uh, your, your family links back to, back to Samoa. Um, yep. Hi, Andre. Thanks for the opportunity to be on here, man. It's awesome to be here. Um, yep. Um, born and bred Christchurch. Uh, Mum and dad migrated back in the 60s to Christchurch, met in Christchurch. Uh, dad, Sene, Sene Tanari Faimalo, he's from Malia. Uh, same village as Ben's uh, family, and mum's from Falalate. Uh, very proud um, Samoan religious, religious um, yeah, parents. So uh, yeah, and so we all went. Ago. We went back home about two two years ago, didn't we, Joe? With mum and dad, just to see the family and have a look at the village and um, how things are going with them and and the, uh, with the family over there. So um, it was quite good to catch up and. Mum and Dad introducing us to some of the other cousins and aunties and uncles that we haven't met for a while. Mm. So it was good to catch up. What's it like in, in Christchurch where um, we know Auckland is a, is a hub of Samoan communities, Wellington is a huge Samoan community. What's, it, uh, what's the Samoan community like in, in, in Christchurch where you were growing up? Was there a lot of Fa'a Samoa presence around you all growing up? Uh, it was quite funny you say that because um, when I actually first got selected to play for Canterbury, um, running out to Kailua Park, I looked across and I'm not sure I've seen all these brown faces. I was thinking, suddenly, and then all I heard was, all I heard was, suddenly, are you Samoan? And then I said, turn around and went, yeah. And they all, they all shouted, I never knew they had Samoans down in Christchurch. <laughs> Yeah, so it was like that. Yeah. So it was kind of good because that like got me introduced to all the boys because I've never met any other Samoans down there. Even though there is quite a lot of the Samoan uh, families in Christchurch, when we grew up, it is a very tight knit because there wasn't that many Samoans. The majority of the Samoans that all were in Christchurch actually all went to the one church. Mm. And so we all knew each other. All the families knew each other. So, you know, being away for quite a, quite a few many years, coming back, holy smoke, I've never seen so many Samoans and Fijians and Tokolowans and Tongans. So, you know, there, are, there is a big community here now in Christchurch. Yeah, I recall a player by the name of Lance Setu way back in yep. the days. Yeah, you know, as one of the um, sort of Thank standout you. Samoan background players from, from Canterbury. Is he still around? Do you see him down there still? I don't know. Still involved with yeah, the league? Yeah, yeah. 
I see Lance, he, see, he's, he's doing well. Um, him and his brother, because back then it was quite a few um, Samoan families. There was the Setus, the Kaisers, the Fumalors. Kaiser, right. So, the, you know, there's quite a few of us that were all playing here. Just that not all of us made it to representative to be known. So, but yeah, there's still a big community here. Fantastic. And for you, Ben, like for us, more in your in your upbringing and your background, how how much was that part of your life as a um, person growing up? Um, impacted on me quite a bit. I mean, we were around the Fa'asa more all the time. I mean, all the Kongaes every Sunday, so it'd be gatherings either at our place in Ōtara or at the Fa'amau Silis in Ponsonby, or be at our other cousins in Greylin. So, um, and like Dad came from like twelve siblings, so. Uh, big family. Yeah, yeah, and and sport, sport and church is a common place for um for people in particular Pacific people to come together, um share the culture, language, and especially those those kongais as well. Um, <laughs> always part of that part of it. But look, just moving on from there, like back to Asini uh, and Joe, um, you you played league in Canterbury. Who, what talk us talk to us about the club that you were involved with there. What was it like? Who who were some of the coaches and um, influential people that were um, around you when you were, you were starting off? Yep, it would have to be uh, Dad. He, um, we were always going to play league because he, he played <laughs> league for our local um, community. So, um, and he's pretty much got us, us uh, involved right from early age. I think I was 11 and then right up to Schoolboys school Linwood. So that was our local club and then we kind of veered off to a couple of other clubs in, in Canterbury. And then we had the one season up in Wellington and then we went overseas. So, yeah, so uh, influential would be probably the dad that got us into it. Yeah. Uh, our, dad was a, our dad was a real hard yes. taskmaster. Yep. Right. <laughs> he, he gave us a choice when we were younger. He said, you either have to be good in school or be good at sports. So we chose sport. <laughs> I chose sport. So with, with that, he, he used to, with that, he used to kill us on the field, like yeah. fitness-wise. He was like the man. So if it wasn't for him pushing us and mum supporting us, and you know, I don't think we would have made where we we got to. So. And did you both play for Canterbury? Like we both Canterbury representatives, obviously, um, uh, in your time down there. Yeah, I, I, I played up all up to the uh, grades, and I played for Canterbury Emerging, and Sydney played for quite a few years for Canterbury. Uh, yeah, and beat Auckland a few times and Wellington. So yeah, we no. we had um, we were quite lucky to play under the coaches like Ray Hafferton, Frank My, uh, Frank Endicott. Yeah. So you know Frank Frank's still a good friend of ours. You know we see him all the time and catch up with him. So. Who were some of the standout players from Canterbury that you you could talk you know you'd you'd talk about that were around you at the time as well? Um, good question. He was like Wayne Wallace. He was a workhorse back in the days when I used to. I like I like the rough and rugged, and I used to like Mark Broadhurst. Yeah, yeah. He used to like tough yeah. it out now. Now that's one tough dude. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, he was a Linwood player too, eh? Was he at Limbo? Papanui. He was a Papanui. Papanui. Okay, yeah, right. Was, um, yeah. Who was that? Uh, Ray, was it Ray Ashton? Was it? He was a Longwood boy, wasn't he? Yeah, Ray Ashton, yeah. Yeah, he was another one. Um, but, yeah. No, good, good. Some good, well, well, well-known names in the Canterbury and, and league circle. Hey, and, and Ben, for you, like you mentioned there, you're um, the family up in Ōtara. So, were you playing league that up, up in Auckland as, as a young person? Or, um, yeah. Tell us about this um, growing up in Ōtara. No, I didn't play league at all because uh, I went to a little primary school in Ōtara, uh, South Auckland, called East Tamaki Primary. And we had some good sports people come through our primary, like Eric Rush, Peter Alatini, and Tauta Nico. So yeah. I played probably one tournament of league at Standard 4. And then, because Dad was pretty much rugby through and through, and it wasn't until we moved to Samoa for a couple of years and then we moved down to Wellington that I got introduced to rugby league. So it wasn't from like, first game of league was probably 10 years old and then the next game of league was 17. 
And um, I think coming back to league, playing under 17s, I never looked back to union. I just had that one game, uh, met all my friends, you know, like friends that we still, you know, we still got those friendships now and never looked back. I just enjoyed it and just loved the game of rugby league. Uh, who were some of the people in that under-17 upper hut team with you? Because um, uh, they probably would have been at a time when some, you know, up-and-coming players were coming on the scene as well. Who, who, were, who was playing around that time in, um, in the 17s? And then, then you moved up. Yeah, tell, tell us about that journey, playing 17s and then, um, you know, being in the Prems. We had a pretty good 17s. I mean, Sid Edu was our hooker for one. And then we had the twins, Jacob and Jason Crown. I mean... They went out to have good careers with the uh, Panthers and mm. Wainui. And then we had guys like Ian Coles. He was our Barlangi mate from college. He was like one of the only Barlangi dudes in our, our league team. Before that, he did like, he was a triathlete. So he mm. was pretty fit. Uh, William Ayono. I mean, yeah, William, yeah, we're probably yeah. the only Samoans in the 17s. And we just went from there to, we stuck, the next year I went back to rugby because you know, Dad wanted me to give it one more crack. And then uh, after that, went back to 19s and then um, just stuck it out with the league. Just enjoyed my time with the Tigers. So you come into the Premier team. Who was um, who was coaching the team then and who were the, some of the key players at, at the Tigers when you when you made the step into the Prems? Well, the funny thing is, um, I still remember getting a call up to the Prems. So it was a Wednesday night game at the Hut Rec and both of the gents that were on there um, tonight. Uh, so, Asini and Joe were playing, and then you had, like, Peter Edwards, Victor Aramoana, I think Morv was playing, uh, Dave, James Pike here was standoff, Toko was playing um, halfback, and then you had Asini and H. I think it was either Siddle Hepper in the front row, and then you had Sonny Fakaro, Mark Woods, and I think Lucy was Mike, so... You know, these wow. are like past Kiwis, team. current Kiwis, future Kiwis. I was thinking, man, yeah. I better play good tonight. <laughs> that's that's the Welling that's the that's the Wellington team there. You know, minus one or two other uh, Wainui or Ranrick Patoni players that would have been around at the time as well. Um, awesome. Hey, for you, Asina Joe. So you you know down at Linwood, and you know ended up at the Tigers. All three of you playing together. What what was the motivation to come? come north and play in Wellington and be at Upper City Tigers? Well, Joe Joe was playing for Wollstone, and um, I think that was your 19th, eh, Joe? Yeah, yeah, that was my first year of uh, Prems when we when both me and Sini come up to Wellington. Um, we, we'd come up for a wee look um, before the season started, eh? And there was, I think it was Wanwick as well that was interested in signing both of us. So uh, we've done a tour of Wanwick as well as Upper Hutt, so we end up uh, choosing Upper Hutt uh, to play in, in what a season. Well, like I've played like over 10 years overseas, and but one of those most memorable ones was with Upper Hutt, and, and that was a team to play for. It was awesome, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, so I, I got a phone call from uh, Tyrone saying, would you be interested, well, more than Edwards, really, and because we just come back from tour. And he says, would you be interested in coming to Upper Hutt? And I says, oh, I've got to come with my little brother. And he says, what is he like? And he says, oh, my dad said he's better than me, but I don't know how that is. <laughs> <laughs> Much better. <laughs> so uh, they says, oh, well, we'll bring him up and we'll have a look and we'll see where we go from there. And myself and Joe never to look back because, um, you know, for that for that season, it was just unbelievable. It was awesome year for a while. Good uh, memories. Yeah, yeah, there was a dynamic upper hut side, you know, um, Winning, winning finals, I, I remember I was, I was playing for Renwick at the time and um, there was a period there where Renwick had, had their time, then Upper Hart, and then obviously Wainui came along and just fantastic top players running, running around at, you know, at a Wednesday night Hutt Rec game. Um, you, you, it, it was international level of um, players um, that we could see uh, on, on the field. But um, Ben, I also understand you, know, you, you spent... Um, a season or two at Ranwick as well? Was that part of your, you know, um, part of your plans and playing, moving to Ranwick and later on? It wasn't really part of my plan. I'd just come back from Widners and um, I had a meeting at uh, Whakatiki with our manager and unfortunately they couldn't fit me under their 
salary cap at the time, I'd say. So uh, Dad says, you know, jump in the car. Um, and then the first words that came out of Dad's mouth were, we're going to Wainui. And I said, Dad, stop the car. And then he stopped the car. And he goes, are you right, son? I said, Dad, I'll play for any other team but Wainui. So <laughs> then I ended up at Renwick. <laughs> <laughs> and I played for the Kingfishers. Was that just for that one season or a couple of seasons? Or Yeah, it was like it was the 91 season. I'm pretty sure it was yeah. almost halfway through the season. So um, guys like myself and Mox, we ended up going to Randwick. And even though right, yeah, in my head I didn't want to go to Randwick, it was probably like one of the best years. Like that 1990 season with Upper Hutt, that was good. And then just meeting all the Randwick boys, that was just just where footy takes you. Meet, you make a lot of great friendships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no for sure. Um, look, and then at one stage, all three of you were at, at Witness. So it'll be interesting to have a talk about that, going from um, uh, either playing in Canterbury or Upper Hutt or Tata, um, rep football, and then on to um, UK professional league. And then... You know, there might, would have been other teams along the way, but in particular, it'd be good to look at witness and he hear some reflections from you and probably go to Cindy and Joe. What what took you up to witness? How did that process come about? So um, I started with the 89 tour with the Kiwis and I got approached by uh, a few clubs while I was over there. And um, I said to them, listen, I've been to Australia. I want to go home and then I'll decide when, when I come back. So... Um, so I decided to go with Witness because they had like one of the best teams and everybody keeps saying, don't go there, you won't get in. I says, oh, I'll get in. So uh, <laughs> I like a challenge. So um, when I did go there, um, while I was playing there, Witness were looking for a winger. And um, at that time, we had Brian McKibby, who was like lightning, and Martin the Fire on yeah. the other wing. Yeah. And I says, oh, I've got a winger for you. Mm. His name's Ben Leo. <laughs> and um, they were like, what's he and like? This is, um, Dougie Lawton said to us, what's he like? And I says, he can run like the wind, like I says, in mud. He says, he's like lightning. And he's went, right, I want him. So I rung Ben, had a chat with his dad, made sure he was allowed to come over. And um, on his way there, Dougie said to myself and Martin the Fire, I don't think, I don't know if Ben knew this, but Mark, Dougie asked Martin to bring his spikes so Ben could have a sprint race with him. He wanted to see how fast Ben was. And then Martin asked me, he says, how fast is this kid? And I went, he's like lightning. And then when Ben turned up, Martin heard his foot. He can't, he says, I, can't, I can't do it. I can't, I can't sprint. So he didn't want to lose his uh, reputation. So he was quite scared of Ben. So he did well. Well, that's saying something, you know, Martin O'Fire is a legend, absolute legend in the game. And, you know, I understand he originally, as an athlete, is a sprinter. That's his, that's, you know, that's his, what he does. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, he's, he was one of the fastest wingers in the world. So, you know, yeah, one of those things. No, he's incredible when playing in the NRL as well. You know, we'll remember um, his, um, that, that, that lightning speed and the gap, he was gone. There wasn't anyone going to catch him. And what about for you, Joe, your your experience of... Um, yeah, being I, I come to Woodness uh, a few years after uh, Sini and Ben were there. Um, I had like uh, four seasons at, at Oldham and then I went to Salford and then I finished uh, my career at Woodness. So it was um, quite fitting because uh, that was... we. We made the grand final and we won it, so that was quite um, yeah. a, a good season for me. So, and that was a quarter of a day after that that year. So, yeah, with witness. What, what position were you playing in the, in the witness team in the pack there? Uh, second row, and then yeah, slot up to prop. Yeah, mainly second row. Yeah, and how would you compare? Like, obviously, that's a huge professional leap playing um, with the witness team, but. Uh, up Hunt City Tigers, you know, some of the names we read out before was a pretty slick pack. You know, um, uh, how would some of the players you played with back then fare playing in, in Witness and in the UK professional scene at that time? Oh, I reckon the New Zealand League Up had so much talent. If you, you could pick, like, any one of those Upper Hutt teams to come over 
and play over in England and they'd slot into any professional team. It's just, uh, yeah, um, because we had Sonny Whakarau, he was over there playing uh, for a few clubs over there. Um, yeah, it was just um, fortunate that we got a chance to um, progress from um, our mm. opportunity over there. So, yeah, I'll, upper hut uh, forwards, like, would have slotted, or even the backs that we played with in upper hut would have slotted in, in, in any of those teams easily. Yeah, and some of them were there, like you said, like like Sonny, um, Morvan would have been up there, Mike Kuwiti as well, yeah, you know. So, well. um, yeah. I played yeah, with Mike yeah. Kuwiti for about, yeah, three seasons over in Oldham. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he, was, yeah. Um, he was at the end of his career, but he was um, pretty sure he was, the three seasons he was at Oldham, he was like, um, he was 30 for like those three years. So Yeah, 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 yeah. So no, like, fam- yeah, yeah. Fabulous player, fabulous player, yeah. yeah. Hey, and Ben, and for you, mate, you, you, you're up there and you're with these, these gentlemen. Your reputation went ahead of you as being the person that could outrun Martin O'Fire that he um, didn't turn up to the first training when he heard you were there. Bro, tell us about what it was like for you, you know, um, getting there, landing in the north of England from, uh, from Upper Hutt and... Um, Fronting up for training at, at, at Witness and then being part of the professional scene there. Well, the funny thing is, like growing up as a kid, Andre not only was my dad like union, he I was doing athletics as well. So um, I just carried on my athletics even when I was playing league at Upper Hutt for seven ends and and nine ends. And I still remember the phone call like talking to Celia, but it still hadn't sunk in. It wasn't until Dougie Lawton called me. And I knew it was a long distance call because it was really staticky. You know, you didn't have cell phones in those days. It was the landline. And then um, it was just, uh, uh, we want you to come over here and play rugby league, uh, go and pick up your ticket from British Airways tomorrow. So this is when Willie and Willie Ayono and Sid Edu, they um, they got apprenticeships at Fletcher's. They came home. And then I was waiting at Willie's front doorstep and I said to them both, did you guys call me today? And yeah, I thought it was a prank call. And then they were like, why would we call you? And then I thought, and I said to them, oh, someone called and said, uh, I'm going to witness. We're going to go pick up a ticket tomorrow. This was a Thursday. So the boys took the next day off and they drove me into Wellington because I didn't have a car. I was still at school. So Sid and Willie drove me into Wellington. And it was just probably just luck. A car just pulled out from British Airways and we parked at the front and I was still thinking, no, this can't be, this can't be true. It doesn't happen to you know, people like myself. So I walk in and um, I said to the lady, uh, do you have a ticket for a Ben Lear? So she just types in Ben Lear, like she gives me this funny look. She types it in and then she goes, will that be smoking or non-smoking? And I was thinking, <laughs> oh, well, it is true. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> happening. Then I go out to the car and I hold the ticket up to Sid and Willie and they went, you're joking. And I went, man, I'm, I'm going to England tomorrow. <laughs> so before you know it, I'm over there. And then um, I think the first game that I was at was against Wigan. So mm. because my flight was delayed, I think they were going to parade me around the field at halftime. I'm so glad I did it because that would have been so embarrassing. And like just to meet all the, not only the Witness players, that's why it was just so awesome that Eseni was there. Eseni introduced me to all the Witness players. And then took me around the uh, Witness club rooms again. I met all the Wigan players. I was thinking, man, someone pinched me. I'm, I, I must be still dreaming. Yeah, look, you, you mentioned an interesting thing there about um, uh, obviously being uh, with Asini and Joe looking after you. And uh, just interesting, because the three of you spent quite a bit of time over there in the UK. And one of the things that... Um, that we're hearing about now is um, you know players being away from their families, and sometimes we hear that hear that a bit, particularly with um, our, our Pacific Ainga, we're close to our families, and um, that causes a, a, a fair bit of stress and strain on um, on um, on being away. How did um, what were sort of the things that worked for you you three? And I'll sort of go to Joe and Isene. Being away, what what kept you grounded? What kept you um, being two Christchurch Samoan boys? thousands of miles away over in a cold England and, um, and, and still being able to um, keep, keep playing footy and keeping it all, all, all happening, all going. Yeah, we had a, think... 
yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah we, had, we had a good contingent of Kiwis over there. Um, back then, it was only like, you only allowed like three Kiwis per club, uh, overseas players per club. So um, we were quite um, fortunate that we all like lived up north of England. So it was only like within half an hour drive. So we always got together as, as Kiwis and had barbecues and like Inga would have, like have a massive, Pig on spit, like yeah. So would that that would uh, help us, um, you know, being on the other side of the world, feel like we're in New Zealand. But yeah, no, that helped big time. Because because the clubs are so close. If you've ever been anywhere, like over to England, <clears throat> the towns are really close to each other. Like mm. St Helens is only fifteen minutes drive to Widnes. Same to Warrington and. All those, the, all those clubs all link up pretty closely. So when I first went over there, there was myself, Kurt Sorensen, Joe Grimmer, and Mossy Coloto, mm. that we all got together. And then we'll play against, have a, we'll hook, book a, a basketball court, we'll play against the Wigan boys. It'll be Inga, Frano, and all the other um, Kiwi boys. And then we'll play against the Warrington boys, which would be Dwayne Mann and, and all the other Warrington players, Gary Mercer, and so on and so on. So we'd all still get together and and um, have barbecues, like Joe said, and every now and then the boys would go, oh, we've got a pig on the spit. And I went, that's us. And, and like, um, the first time we drove to, we lived in Witness, and there was a barbecue in Hull, and it's like a two and a half hour drive. And then they're saying, we're saying to some boys, oh, we're going for a barbecue. We went, where? Hull. They went, that's two and a half hours drive. I went, mate, the Kiwis go, we go, we get a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that that's how it was that's how it was like and um you know that we all got together but we all try and keep in touch and the communities over there now at this time before we left it's big communities all getting together and having like get together like all the Yorkshire boys would get together and then everybody would be ringing up ringing up all the old boys and says oh you still here yeah yeah we've got a barbecue going on and then they get all the kids together and they have lolly scrambles and it's, it's really good. It's really all family rotated and they help each other, like teaching the kids how to speak their language and stuff like that, which is, which is a big thing, which, which is lost over there, especially because you're away from home and you're not speaking the language all the time. And so that's what my girls, they've moved with us to New Zealand and they're taking up courses to be able to uh, speak to Samoan and all that. You know, that voice says, why didn't you speak it to us? Because it was no good to you over there. For <laughs> so, but, you know, but yeah, they're old enough to go learn it now. So yeah. it's good. <laughs> but it sounds like you had that, you know, well, there's the Kiwi culture. That's, that's, that's one thing. And being all Kiwis over there. But then there's also that Pacifica uh, Polynesian culture as well. And it feels like that um, you managed to um, main, maintain that in, in one way or another uh, with everyone. Yeah, there, we used to have a, um, we used to raise money for all the local kids, like the Tongan boys, with the rugby and and other players, kids to sponsor them. And we used to have island lights, which was quite funny because we'd hire out the Witness Club, and like uh, the boys would go, "Solly, you have to help us with the Tongan dance," and I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> then. And then I says, "Right, you guys have to help us with the sasa," and then that was that's why all fell in. So we all help each other in that in that kind of way and. You know, they do the island food and, you know, some of the English would turn up and goes, what's this, what's this, like, um, worms-looking stuff? Chip suey, mate. You'll, be like, you'll love it. <laughs> so get into it. So just, just on that in the Pacific culture, like you, you mentioned earlier, it's in there that you, um, you played in the first Pacific Cup in, the Cook, in Rarotonga for Samoa. Yeah. Yeah, t t tell us a bit about that, that first Pacific Cup. You were reflecting how, how strong it was in terms of the types of the players that were there representing Tonga, Samoa, Rarotonga, New Zealand, Māori. Yeah, the, 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 all the players in the team back then all had like all international players and um, it was strong. And like growing up in Christchurch, I didn't get that clash of the cultures. Myself and Joe, you know, we never knew there was a, there was a clash between Samoa and Tonga because, you know, that, we didn't grow with it, we didn't grow up with that. So when we went to play the Pacific Cup, you know, going in that changing room and all the elders and the fathers coming into the we we played Tonga in the semi final, and that was like a final. Holy smoke! You sat in the changing room. <laughs> they came in and they says, "This this is war," and I was like, "Oh, 
I thought we'd just play Tonga. He says, no, <laughs> this is serious. You know, you must beat the Tongans. And then I, was, I ran out and I seen George Mann and Dwayne Mann. And I was yelling out, Tolly, my dad said to kill you. <laughs> and he yelled out, my dad said to kill you too. <laughs> so, you know, it was like that, you know, it was like the clash. It was a big clash. And we didn't, I didn't understand it till later on, until I talked to other boys and, you know, the cultures and behind it and everything else. And I thought, oh, okay, then that's where it is. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and for you, um, Ben and Joe, um, your connection with, with Samoan Rugby League, do you have any, any links there, either locally or uh, things that may connect you back home to Rugby League? Uh, I'll try to go first. Yeah, I was, um, I, I missed out on this. I, was, I, I got picked for the Samoan squad in 2000 and in the water squad. But then I got injured over in England, so I wasn't able to. Uh, yes, I was gutted for that. Um, so, um, but Samoan, um, yeah, I'm I'm proud to be Samoan, and uh, my boy's playing now. He's under nine. He had his first year league last year, um, so he's play, he's playing local in in Canterbury. So um, he's got a choice between going to play for Samoa or Kiwi, so, and I'd say choose Samoa. <laughs> uh, how about for you, Ben? Um, well, my cousin, Mike Tomata, he played prop for Northcote. He played in the 89 grand final when they beat Wainui. So I Mike calls me yeah. and, uh, yeah, played prop with uh, Jason Lowry. So uh, 92, he gives me a phone call. I'd just come back from the... Um, me, Sid and Woody, we went away with the uh, Uphart Reserves for their away trip, so we'd come home and Dad's cousin comes around. He's uh, took a loan. This is like before I knew that we had took a loan in our blood. And he was like, "Oh, Tom, do you mind if I um, take your son up to Auckland for a Pacific Cup? I need a co-driver." And then I was like, "What are they talking about?" And then Dad just comes over and says, "Well, you've already done your washing. You and Uncle Lou are going up to uh, Auckland to watch the took a loans play." I was like, "Oh, awesome!" So Mike calls me before we leave, and he goes, "Oh." Because I've got your spot in the um, Samoan team. I was like, oh, man, this is I me mean, next to the All Blacks. That's just your dream to play yeah. for Western Samoa and represent you know, the heritage of your parents. And then five minutes later, Mike calls back. But we called him Bangy growing up. So Bangy calls me back. He goes, Kaz, um, yeah, you just missed out on the Samoan team. I said, Kaz, you told me I was in the Samoan team. <laughs> and then he goes... And then he goes, Kaz, I think they need a reserve for the American Samoans. I went, well, it's Eastern Samoans, so it's close enough. And then Bangy calls him back five minutes later. He goes, oh, Kaz, they ended up taking one of the guys from the islands. I was going, oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> so the dad's cousin says, oh, we're going up to Auckland. Bring your boots just in case. So we get up to Auckland. We're over on the North Shore. And uh, there was Hatupolda College where the boys are training. And then... Um, the coach comes over, Atul Neil Patelesio, and uh, Anton mm. goes to me, mm. Ben, isn't your uh, grandfather from Fuck Awful, Koi Uh I think so. And then he goes, oh, you've got to be on standby just in case someone gets injured. So a couple of the boys went over the curfew, you know, part of the rules. And the funny thing is, my cousin Sully Lomua gets dropped, and I take Sully's spot to play for Koi Lau. So we played against um, uh, the Maldives at Narawahia. Dave Ewe was playing. Woody was playing. I think Sid was on the sideline. And guys like Kere Parata were playing. So mm. that was my representative footy play for Goilau. But very proud because that's where my grandfather was from. So proud to down the colours for Goilau. Yeah, I think the Pacific Cup tournaments, the, the Maori tournaments... Um, that are still going on now. That they're, they're doing a lot to keep um, the momentum going in the game, particularly as um, as we know, Pacifica and Maori uh, make up huge numbers in the game. Um, not exclusive to Maori or Pacifica, but play a huge part. And those those tournaments, I think, going back like to your one in '86, Essendia, there were so many like like you're saying that you, there were Kiwi and NRL level players there, and yeah. um, being able to keep that going now, that they're, they're strong, strong competitions and. And Pacific Pacifica people love to go and support um, the island or, or the iwi in the, in, the, in the case of Māori. 
Yeah. It's one of the, that to me, that was the one of the toughest tournaments I've ever played in. Physically, it was that hard, you know. You know, I played in all tournaments all around the world. That's got to be one of the physicalest um, tournaments ever played. In. And uh, Joe, I said there, your, your involvement with rugby league, if at all, now back back home in, in Canterbury? Or are you still around the fringes or um, uh, with your son coaching and, or supporting him in the weekend? Yeah, not too much. Um, yeah, I'm just yeah following my my boy who's playing uh, under nine. So yeah, little, little involvement, involvement, but um, looking to support Ben and his Tigers um when that um reunion next year, early next year in the golf tournament. So yeah, I've been um I've been helping out with the New Zealand University team. We went to uh, Fiji last year. Got a phone call off Kenny O'Brien. Um, saying if I was interested in helping them um, assist with the coaching, him, him and uh, Ray, the two coaches there, and I says, I said, well, they, they rang us up, they said to us, um, would you be interested? And I went, oh, I'm not sure. Where's the tournament? They said, Fiji. Oh, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, <wow. laughs> yeah, yeah. So they, they're like, Oh, you didn't need much persuading there. So I says, oh, Fiji, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> That's good so to it was, hear. It was a good tournament. It was good to help some of the young ones out again. And, you know, because, you know, we always like to help the young and academy come through and mm. try and help them achieve their goals and go further. And for you, Ben, look, we know you're working ultra, ultra hard to um, get things going again at the Upper Hutt City Tigers, particularly in, in the junior scene. and. Um, yeah, mate, tell us about the work you're doing here. I think it's fa fantastic from what we're hearing, but it'd be good to share some of the stuff that's going on to um, rejuvenate the club. Well, I got involved uh, last Easter. Uh, I just heard some like murmurings that the club was struggling, and it was always my long-term goal that after I retired from footy, when I hung up my boots, that if I ever moved back to Wellington, I'd go back to my first junior club and help out where I can. So fast forward a whole year, um, all the hard work they were put in the background, like trying to get the Uppart community on board, uh, trying to get the kids back to the club, getting the families on board to uh, buy in, like, you know, it was pretty much like a family club. And um, all the hard work's paid off. I mean, as of last week, we went along to uh, Ascot Park and watched our under sevens and nice. under tens play. And like, you know, just, Feels like all the hard work's paid off seeing the kids uh, hit the field. Like last week, they played at 9 0 Park. So, and it was really good to see our under sevens play against Wainui. Sort of, back. it brought back a lot of like memories of, you know, the Battle of the Big Cats when we used to play against Wainui, except, you know, you've got some screaming seven year olds, which is, <laughs> uh, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's, that's fabulous, Ben. Hey. And, and the work you're doing there, is, is, is go, it's, it's paying off. We, we, you know, we need our game to grow through the, through the young people. That's where the resources and focus needs to go. And it's um, fantastic to see that, you know, the, the work you're doing here to help out, not just Upper Hutt, but the, the, the whole um, Wellington Rugby League. Um, that is fantastic, bro. Um, look, guys, we'll wrap, wrap this up. It's been a, um, been a pleasure talking to the three of you. Um, Send there, Joe and Ben, you know, three Upper Hutt City Tigers, um, representative players, Kiwi Pacific Cup players, and then, you know, having um, playing on the northern fields of England and, and, and witness. So I think that's, a, um, that's something unique and, and, and fantastic to have been able to talk about and share that with the Mana Tana Tala Noor, um, people that will tune into this. So I just want to thank you all once again uh, for your contribution, congratulate you on your careers, and um, yeah. Yeah, Manuia, Baftai Lava, thank you. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, thank you, Andre. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Appreciate it.